and it funny it, they I actually met them before UIW and before I knew they were designers creatives of any kind we worked together at a restaurant here in town urban taco and it's been great to see them from I met them as you know servers and I annoyed them and you know uh, we had fun at work and then to see them go into to, to school and, and evolve as creatives and, and, and that talent, uh, it's, it's just great to see. And I'm really, really, really excited to have them here. Uh, today, they have a great talk prepared for y'all about the power of teamwork. Um, before we get started with that, um, I'm dropping here their Venmo apps. Uh, Arturo and Eddie, just like all of our speakers uh, for Unidos, have been gracious enough to give back to the community and put in their time to prepare these talks, to be here with us uh, and, and share their stories with you for free. <laughs> you know, it takes time and we really, really appreciate y'all being here. Um, so, you know, if y'all want to help them out, hey, send them money, you all need money. Um, and without further ado, I am going to hand off the stage to our Arturo and Eddie, and I'm gonna disappear. I'll see you in the chat, y'all take it away. Thank you, Jimena, for that introduction. Um, how's it going, everyone? Welcome to Tu Los Tacos y Yo La Soda. We really appreciate everyone for just taking the time and being here, hanging out with us. Um, and But honestly, shout out to our moms because I know they're probably watching this right now. To begin, we'd really like to thank everyone involved and the AIGA community for putting this event together. And of course, we also like to give a special shout out to AIGA San Antonio for thinking of us. We're super excited to be here. So again, just thank you for this opportunity. Um, like Jimena had previously mentioned, um, they had asked us to share our Venmos and cash apps for any donations. But to be honest, being here talking to you guys is more than enough for us. So if any donations do come through, we're going to be giving all the proceeds to the National Bell Ad Fund, um, which is a community-based movement to support and, and systems of mass incarceration. Um, our tags are the same on any platform, so um, we just thank you in advance. Thank you. And now that we have all the legal stuff out the way, to properly introduce ourselves, my name is Eduardo Juarez. I'm currently an art director for Anderson Marketing Group. And my name is Arturo Guzman, and I'm a graphic designer at Outlook Amusements. And this is what we look like after we shave. Nice and clean. So I was born in Orange County, California, basically right next to Mickey Mouse. And I was born in Guadalajara, Jalisco, in the beautiful country of Mexico. But through our parents' opportunities, we both ended up in San Antonio, Texas. You know San Antonio, home of the Spurs, home of the Flying Chanclas, and home to this giant pair of boots. And that's me in front of those boots for reference. So our original idea was to basically show you guys and talk more about projects we worked on, um, talk a little about process, how we went from point A to point B, and maybe show you guys some fun stuff we've been working on lately. And trust me when we say that none of these projects were a one man job. Um, but after talking over it, we felt like we needed to take a step back and really think about doing something a little more beneficial, um, especially with everything going on in the world right now. We noticed how working in teams is significant now more than ever. Um, we've also noticed how everyone had to adapt to these new situations during this pandemic. So we've all had to come together and do the unexpected, like um, having meetings in our kitchens or like my friend Arturo wearing boxers to corporate meetings. So just situations like these is why we really wanted to shine a light on the positivity of just working with other people. So to give you a little more context about us, this famous image is a clear representation for why Eddie and I even started working together. We had a lot of similarities, like music, design, but more than anything, our Hispanic background. Nos gustan los tacos, el mismo equipo de fútbol, y hasta teníamos la misma raza de perro. Pero aparte de todo, nuestras familias eran muy similares, siempre bromeando, pero con mucho cariño. And with that being said, 
The idea of family is strong through all communities, but we feel it's especially strong in the Hispanic community. Family is everything to us, and we will literally do anything for a family member. I'm sure we're not alone in saying that we've had to stay home and watch a younger sibling, a cousin, a uncle, a grandpa, while our parents were at work. And when you think about it, growing up in a family is teamwork 101. Everyone has a job that they have to do, whether it's mowing the lawn or washing the dishes. But most importantly, it's the mindset of nobody getting left behind. Always looking out for one another and taking care of each other. And just one thing before we really get into it, we just want to mention that we don't have everything figured out. This is not going to be an official guide to make you a better person to work with or anything. Because sometimes you just have to work with questionable people and we really can't control any of that. But what you can control is how you handle the situations because uh, you still have a job to do. So more than anything, we just wanted to share our experience, not only working together, but just with people in our creative industry. Just pointing out the little things that we noticed worked during projects that led us to be efficient when we're working with other people. So to start off, working in teams has been a thing since cavemen have been around. One hunts, one collects materials, while the other starts the fire and so on. Everyone has a significant role, no matter how small the task may seem. And if you fast forward to current times, that same method is used today. We have our creative directors, art directors, freelancers, copywriters, media buyers, production artists, and so on. Everyone on that team has a very important job to complete. And the crazy part about this whole teamwork situation is that if everyone does their job right, you can really create something meaningful for your clients. And that's when you start realizing the power of teamwork. But this all starts by finding some type of common ground with the people around you. Whether you're the new guy or have seniority, it's always nice to have something in common with the person sitting across from you. This can be anything from music, design, food, a TV show, maybe even a strange true obsession. Now, we do understand being the black sheep in the room, but that's when you can introduce something new to the people around you. Who knows? Maybe you'll find something in common with the last person you'd expect. And if you really feel like you don't have anything in common, just, to rem just remember, be yourself. There's nothing better than that. And having those connections with your peers just makes it easier to communicate with one another. And then that's when you can really start building on those relationships with everyone. You kind of get to know their sense of humor. You start to know their Starbucks order. And then if they let you kind of into their personal life, you know their cat person, dog person, if they collect plants, shoes, you know. It's just always nice to know that you can go to work and just be comfortable with everyone around you. But again, sometimes you may work with those questionable people, but at that point, you just need to be the bigger person to get your work done, not only effectively, but efficiently. And you also don't wanna burn any bridges just because you don't see eye to eye with somebody. Believe me, you really never know how someone can help you in the long run. Especially in this creative industry, sometimes it just comes down to who you know. So just remember to be kind to everyone and that by itself should take you far. Once everyone has those personal connections, that turns into an overall environment. Having a strong work environment can go a very long way. Everyone feeds off each other and pushes each other to grow. It's also a great feeling to know that your coworkers and yourself have the same passion and that there's a common goal. Now, a strong environment does take time to build. Everyone should be on the same page and should be willing to put in the work. And when it comes to egos, leave those at the front door. Going into projects with an open mind and being ready to listen is very important. Also, take time to learn from your team members. Learning from each other is a very valuable thing we are creatives, we are not perfect. So why not take it all in? It can be as simple as learning a new shortcut on your computer to learning a new way to present concepts to your clients. 
because trust us when we say that there's always something to improve on. And speaking about trust, you get to slowly establish um, a level of trust in your work environment. And trust can come in a variety of ways. For example, trusting them to meet their deadlines or trusting them to take over a project for you in case you need to step away for a couple of days. Trusting them that you can go to them about anything or even trusting them to keep the mini bar under your desk a secret, you know? <laughs> Clearly, we don't mean trusting them with your social security number or anything, but more just rather being confident that they're gonna have your back. Um, this kind of trust really starts to strengthen your work relationships because you don't have to constantly be checking up on anyone or worried about them meeting their deadlines. Because to be honest, nobody likes working while someone's constantly looking over their shoulder. And with that being said, this trust creates a peace of mind. And what's more valuable than peace of mind? By this, we mean being comfortable in your work environment. Now, we don't mean take off your shoes and take a nap at work, but the type of comfortable that allows you to think freely outside the box. As long as you can comfortably spread your wings as a team, why not go for it? Being comfortable with the people around you will always spark some sort of new idea. And this usually brings out a type of confidence in people. Remember that everyone in your brainstorm got invited there for a reason. So make sure you give them a reason. Being comfortable and confident in your work will definitely go a long way. And this will usually lead to some type, some type of risk taking. And, and to be honest, in our opinion, risk taking is one of the best, best attributes anyone can have. Um, taking a risk can come in a variety of things though. Anything from having the confidence to sharing your idea during a brainstorm and risking that it may get shut down to speaking up and giving your opinion on why you may disagree with someone's idea and <laughs> risking that someone will eat your lunch that day or something, you know? But to thinking way outside of the box that everyone will question if your concept even works. But to be honest, there's no way of finding out without trying, which is where your solid team environment will come into play. And they should be honest with you and say that your idea is too risky or they're gonna have your back and make your idea come to life. Sometimes it's gonna be a little bit of both. So take a risk and shoot your shot because you really never know what can come out just by putting your idea out there. And with that being said, sometimes you need a little motivation, you know, to take those shots. Having a strong support system can be very motivating. For example, when someone on the team gets that libel bulb idea, it's always comforting to motivate them to push that idea even further. Another form of motivation can be a simple affirmation, comforting someone when they're having a bad day or when they're questioning a simple logic or design can go a long way. Always be honest, but let your team member know that they are not alone in their situation. And just like affirmation can be very motivating, um, we believe that hustle can be very contagious. And this type of hustle mentality within your work environment usually always starts from the top. When you see your leaders and your managers and your bosses work hard, it sparks a drive in the rest of the team that just pushes everyone to give their best. No matter the task, position, at the end of the day, it's a team effort and everyone involved should strive to do their best because you have to remember that you're only as strong as your weakest link. So if you see someone on your team trailing behind or having a difficult time catching up or just can't keep up, make sure to reach out and see how you can help. Because again, this all goes back to having that solid team environment. So we just hope you can take something out of this conversation and hopefully use it in your personal life. Um, if it backfires, I, we apologize in advance, um, but working in teams isn't anything new and it can lead to a lot of great things and opportunities, but it all really just starts with yourself being open-minded and ready to listen. At the end of the day, people criticize our work, not the people we are. So don't let those negative comments get in the way. Don't let them get in your head. 
just take the feedback and you can either dwell on it or you can learn from it. And I keep repeating myself, but working in teams is really important now more than ever because we're definitely living in crazy times and we just need to learn to at least get along with each other and respect everyone around us. Because like my mom always said, treat others the way you'd like to be treated. We just believe that we need to be better and do better for our community. Just try to be that person that you would want to work with. Be open-minded and as creatives, we need to be great listeners for ourselves, for our clients, and for our teammates. And hopefully, the next time we see each other, you'll be bringing the tacos and we'll be bringing the sodas. Gracias. Gracias. So, and tell me when you talk about this, because um, y'all haven't actually worked together in a company, you've worked in school, but do you have like any side projects or as y'all, because every time I think of y'all, I just think of like the dynamic super duo, you know, y'all are great, always together. Um, you know, I always bothered you about that. But, so I'm curious, you know, because sometimes working with really close friends can be a tricky balance, right? Because you don't want to fight with them, but it, that, that trust that, I'm just, you know, you kind of talked about it, but on a, on a more personal level between y'all too. I'm just curious how that works out or how. I mean, I think it comes down to, like we talked about, just building that relationship with, you know, your team or that specific somebody, whoever's, you know, whoever you go to. And I think, you know, through the years, Eddie and I have kind of developed a relationship where we both feel comfortable, you know, coming to each other, even if it might not be something we're working on together just to kind of get a different idea, you know? I feel like we all know that that feeling when we've been working on a project for eight, 10, 12, 14 hours and we kind of get pigeonholed, you know, seeing something. And sometimes just getting a fresh set of eyes from somebody can really shake up, you know, what you were looking at. You're like, oh, I wasn't even thinking about that before. And so just kind of building that relationship with, you know, your friends and team members, I think makes that a little easier where we don't feel offended or anything like that, you know? Yeah. And it's just respecting what, other, what the person has to say, you know? Because don't get me wrong, it was, I mean, I'm sure he remembers, it, at first it was hard when we were doing anything together. For and sure. We did everything together. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> but to answer your question, I guess in present time, we have collaborated and stuff. It's more like freelance, just projects. Um, but like he said, it's almost like a daily thing. We are so into our own teams at work that sometimes it's always nice to show somebody outside your group because like he said, it's like, oh, you never think of something like that until somebody from the outside gives you a different perspective. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. um, we have a question from Victor. Uh, says sometimes it's hard to be both creative and business minded what's the biggest lesson you've learned about running your own business any hard lessons you want to go ahead yeah it's just the business aspect in it and i don't want to sound cliche it's just like that little drive that little hustle mentality it's just you got to build it and it's like you got to want it because at the end of the day if you don't put yourself out there, if you don't try and go get those clients or just show face, you know, I mean, nothing's going to happen. And we're all creatives. I'm sure some of us are super shy. I was the shyest. I never spoke up. I never talked in brainstorms. I would just write my ideas down and, you know, never share them. And then sometimes you would hear your idea out there and you'd be like, oh, I thought of that like two weeks ago. But you just need to learn how to, you know, like we said, you know, having the risk, speaking out speaking out if you disagree with something because again you may have a different perspective i yeah, also think sure. it, it's important to you know give yourself a little slack you know we're we're always growing we're always learning and you know school it, you know you learn a lot about the design but then you also have to learn about the business side of things you know how to approach a client like eddie said how to write a you know, a whole contract and how to make sure that they keep, you know, online with that contract, you know, no lawyers or anything, but just, you know, keeping them on track and being like, Hey, is everything all right? 
just kind of creating your business as well as your creativity. They both have to grow at the same time. And mm -hmm. once you have them both, I think that's when you're, you feel, you know, good. You're like, okay, like, I can do this. And then it just kind of drives you to keep going. And then just one thing to add, um, people always separate the client from that creative. But for example, if you're a freelancer, you got to remember that, well, freelancer or not, you got to remember that that client is technically part of the team. So you got to make them feel part of it because A, sometimes they just want to be part of it, even though they haven't done anything. But B, they just, you just need to kind of get them involved so they feel like they had something to do with whatever they're paying you to do, you know? So it just overall, it's a good feeling. And then you guys end up happy, your client ends happy, and it's just an overall good relationship. And just, and I learned this from, again, from my teammates, the executives I work with, um, keeping up with your clients, touching base with them once a week, you know? I know it's weird right now, but like taking them out to dinner at least once in, once, once a blue moon, they usually like that because sometimes they never expect that. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, that relationship is, is a lot. Uh, I always try to remind them, hey, like, we're a team. You know, yes, you hired me, but you're your expert on your field. We're the experts in our field. Let's work together. And those, I've found, are the best projects. Uh, but sometimes it's hard to get them on board, right? So you have to nurture that relationship. Exactly. Um, well, I have a few questions over here, anonymous ones. Let me see. Uh, blah, 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 blah. So what message would you give to students in our community who are interested in art and design and in, in being involved in the field? Or we've got some EIW, you know, they're, some of them are about to graduate. Any advice? Just honestly, it's um, my, like every Hispanic parent, my parents wanted me to be a doctor. I tried it, didn't like it, went to art school. They were super depressed. I kind of had to prove them wrong, you know? It's, it's always that proving wrong, but it's not easy. Um, so just honestly, believe in yourself and put in the time, just have to put in the work. Because again, we don't know everything. Honestly, we don't know anything. We just have been working hard, you know? And I think that by itself should do everything else. See, we've got another one from Victor. Um, what is your favorite project that you have worked on together? Hmm. Um, in one of the slides, it was a it was a project for some. I, think, I mean, Jimena, you've probably seen them. Some tequila bottles um, that we worked with another creative, Eric Mendoza. Shout out to him if he's here. Um, and that one was really cool because, again, that was another challenge of just having to work with two other designers and making something out of nothing, so. It was a good learning experience. And it also kind of touched back to our Hispanic roots. When we, when we got the project, we were just ecstatic. We were like, yes, we actually get to build, you know, create a brand for a tequila bottle. Like, that's literally gold. Yeah, so. yeah. and you being from yeah. Jalisco, huh? like, Ooh. Yeah, I would love to do that one day. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, those are those are great. Um, I we've got still quite a few questions, so let me see. Um, besides other designers, what other role do you most enjoy working with as a teammate, and why? I mean, I have fun in brainstorming, which I mean, I guess it is part of designing, but it's more ideas you know what i mean and again it's just how can we come up with a crazy idea and then make it as real as we can um, i think there's always laughter there's always you know joy in trying to come up with something that has you know that we haven't seen in, in a long time or maybe even ever um i that's where i have the most fun i mean i enjoy just like overall brainstorming, but like just coming up with a concept, you know? Like, I love designing, don't get me wrong, I like the ins and outs in it. But at the end of the day, it's just, we can make beautiful stuff, but if the concept doesn't work or it doesn't make sense, it 
that's all it is. It just looks cool. It doesn't really work, you know? Yep. Uh, a lot of anonymous questions. Uh, I love how you talked about working with questionable people. I'm a senior at university and I come across these questionable people constantly. What are some ways you can make your work and attitude stand out despite very noticeable differences? Yeah, the questionable people, I mean, they're always going to be there. Like we said, you kind of just have to be the bigger person, whatever that okay. tells. Um, but as far as standing out, um, that's the thing. It's just standing out is such a hard thing to do, especially in design right now, because I'm sure we are scrolling through Instagram or whatever, social media, and you see a cool poster and you're like, man, that's cool. And that, when you, that stands out, but it probably took that person so long to get there that, um, it's just such a niche, it's just a very hard question, but I guess to answer it with his own, it's just to stand out, you kind of just have to stand out. Um, and then, yeah, those questions, people just don't mind them. You're gonna have to work with them eventually, don't get me wrong, anywhere you go, there's always gonna be that one person, but just um, set your differences aside because, I mean, both of you have a job to do at the end of the day, so. I think when it comes to the questionable people, it comes down, you know, just respect, you know what I mean? You have to be able to respect that person and expect respect from that person at the same time. Um, and as far as standing out, like Eddie said, it's, it's hard, you know, it is hard even for ourselves. It, you know, we, we have that question, you know, all the time. It's like, how do we push ourselves? How do we stand out? And I think a lot of it is finding your voice and finding that thing that you are passionate about. Like we all are, we are all passionate about design or create, you know, being creative. But on top of that, we have other passions. Some people may have passions for sports or plants or, you know, whatever it is, you know, and it's just finding that passion and then being able to tie it with your whatever creative outlet you do. And I think that alone will help you separate from the rest because you have your voice and no one can take your voice away from you. Sure. Um, someone loves that you mentioned the crazy idea. What's the craziest idea that you had that has been accepted and the craziest that was turned down? Thanks. So, this is cool. <laughs> so the recent one, and shout out to Dennis if he's here, we had the McMay Museum, we got the RFP, we had 48 hours, 72 hours or something. And I told him, I was like, dude, let's make a can and put it on their desk. Hopefully they call us back. He kind of wasn't into it, but we only had 72 hours. So he was like, oh, sure, you know? And honestly, I really appreciate him for having my back in that situation. Um, we presented it or we dropped it off literally with two minutes to spare before it was due. Um, they ended up calling us back. We pitched them as a team and then we got the account like a week later. So it was really cool finding out that we were competing against national agencies and we got to keep it here at home, so. Uh, how do you approach dividing work as you're working on, on your teams? I mean, I guess that, that that can be a little different, but I think it comes to strengths. You know, I think certain, you know, in your team, there might be a person that is strong at one thing and another person that's strong at another. And it's, okay, let's divide the work that way and you know build something together you know always coming to you know coming back and being like hey this is what i have you know what do you have just to kind of keep that in line you know the the creative but i think separating it by strength helps a lot yeah because like we kind of mentioned it just trying to learn from your teammates because i'm sure somebody in your team is a better typography artist than you a better logo designer than you 
and maybe not just being better than each other, but it's just a little, you know, attention to detail sometimes. And if you're going on a project and you know someone on your team is gonna kill it with the logo while somebody else does the concepting and then the copywriter is on point with everybody, you know, it's just like a, just a beautiful blend, you know? Okay, I'm actually curious. Uh, who's more fluent in Spanish? Well, we both are. Yeah, but, I do. Okay, cool. I, I was I was like, you know, because sometimes it, sometimes it's funny to talk shit. It's like, man, you don't even know what that word is. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> no, we if were, that happens, we'll call each other out on it for sure. Yeah, that's yeah. all. <laughs> Spanish was our first language for both of us. We were, uh, my friends still make fun of me because I was, I was in ESL until like, I was pronounced fluent in English until like ninth grade or something, so. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. We did. Do we win? Let me see. Ooh. Um, if someone left their phone or tablet out on a conference, <laughs> would you take a photo with it? Um, yes. I scroll through my phone I find a bunch of pictures of y'all's faces that were at some point in my background. But I'm <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, we would. Yes, I don't care. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Anonymous yeah. attendee, I would love to know who that was because uh, you've done that to teachers too, haven't you? We've right? done that to the dean. We did that to our professors. We no phone that. is safe. Yeah, I did it to the president of my company, and that's the last time I did that. <laughs> 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 I have to ask this. This is kind of a um, a question for me because I'm curious. Um, so it's a selfish question, but you know, here we all are. Um, I want to know more about. Tell me about the the type of agency you guys are each at because uh, I would just like to know more about them and like what what kind of work you do there and and I mean, who are your clients? Who's who's your favorite client? Um, so I work at an advertising agency here in San Antonio. Um, shout out AMG um, and we have a variety of clients but as far as personal um, my biggest client is Alamo College's district which you know it's the whole community college here in town um, my favorite client probably currently is the McMahon Museum because a goal of mine since I was a kid is to do anything for a museum so it's really nice working with them right now um, but I also touch um, Freetel we have so Schwartz, we have Alamo Villarreal, um, and that's all I can think of. But we have a lot. So. Yeah, and so I work for Outlook Amusements, and so I'm part of the in-house team, and oh, okay. so we have two two main brands that we handle all the social, email, all the marketing for, and so that's California Psychics and Psychic Encounters, and so they're psychic advisory services, and so we just pretty much do everything. We do uh, TV spots, you know, emails, social media, pretty much anything that comes through, we, you know, we take care of. Um, okay, so tomorrow at each of your places of work, somebody walks in and hands you uh, your, your dream project. What is that? Plot twist. We're actually off Fridays. We only work four day weeks, so. I'm just kidding. Okay, now I'm all jealous because I got to work tomorrow, so. <laughs> um, actually, that's another cool thing, you know, we have Fridays off. But as far as dream client, I mean, anybody who knows me, I'm sure they know my dream client is Nike. One day, I swear I'm going to touch it. I'm going to get that EPS logo in my email. <laughs> I'm just putting it out there, but that's who it would probably be. Nice. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if I have a dream client per se. I just, I like the idea of, or a dream. I mean, I just like being able to create a brand. Um, you know what I mean? Especially if it's like a small pop, like small shop, someone that has potential, but maybe they don't have the, the whereabouts, you know, to, to create like, or to rebrand themselves. And so I think that opportunity to just kind of elevate an existing, you know, business is always fun because they have their expectations. You know, they've done things for, you know, a certain way for a long time. And it's 
okay, you know, that's worked for you. Very yeah, well let's now. turn that to the ground and do a new thing. Yeah. yeah, or not even a new thing. Let's just let's improve it. You know, let's just make it better. Let's grow it. Let's just increase the views for for your brand. And I always find that fun. Um, so you are very similar, but is there anything that you don't agree with each other at all? All the time. Um, for, like literally anything and everything from sports. We agree on a lot of things, but we disagree on a lot of things as well. So <laughs> it's like we are very similar, but complete opposites. I mean, I'm sure as you can tell in our pictures and our presentations, I never smile. Arturo won best smile in his senior year, you know? So it's like, we know each other, but we know each other so well that I already know if I show him something, he's either gonna hate it or like it. And that's just because we've been friends for so long, so. That's awesome though. I mean, when, when you can have that relationship where there are so many opposites, but still it just, it works, you know? It, that's teamwork right there, right? It's, it's knowing how to, how to work with both of those, you know? It's easy to, to agree on things, but, but still <laughs> work when you don't. Um, what songs would you add to the AAJ when he does playlist? I'll send you my playlist. Let's just I keep was going to say, I'll send you a list. <laughs> we, do, we do have, and I think there, should, there was a drink, uh, link earlier in the chat, and we'll drop it in again. Uh, we do have a Spotify playlist that we, we want to make collaborative playlists for people to share. So think about it. It has to be uncensored, though. So I'm sorry. <laughs> um, OK. Do, what kind of projects are hardest to work with someone else on? I mean, honestly, I'm not going to be, every project is hard to work with somebody else. Like, it's always, it's never, in, it's never going to be an easy thing, you know? But you guys just have to get in the motion and get it done because you guys have a brainstorm Monday morning after a not so good weekend. Somebody's either, some, nobody's always going to be on the same page. So it's just, again, back to that whole motivating thing. Like, I noticed you're not doing too hot today, but I've seen you at your fullest and I really need that right now. We'll pull you to the side and be like, hey, our deadline is Friday. I need you right now. So what's going on? Let me help you so you can help me. And then we go from there. <clears throat> so when you both pitch your ideas to a client, how do you approach working on your partner's chosen concept or do you leave it up to them to execute their vision? Never. I mean, no, no I mean, it, I think it's, I think it's awesome when I mean, obviously, I would love to get my design chosen, but I think when somebody else, you know, gets their logo or whatever chosen, I think it's an awesome feeling. And I'm always there to see how can I help, you know, whatever. How can, can, do you need help, you know, standing the brand? You know, do you need help with the style guide? Do you need anything? You know, just lending a hand. Just because I know that, or at least I hope that one day they'll pick my design and I would like for my team, to, you know, to have my back. And so it's, 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 it's a team, you know, it, it, at the end of the day. So whenever I need to help, you know, I help. And whenever I need help, I know that my team will be there to help me. And like we said, just, you know, no egos. And no egos. Be open-minded because you got to be honest with yourself. If you guys present all your stuff and it's up there and somebody's is clearly way better than yours. Yep. Don't be a hater and be like, nah, mine's still better, you know. No, you really have to be open-minded and be like, no, that dude killed it. That's the direction we should go. And then again, you have their back. Hopefully when yours gets chosen, they have your back. And that's how you guys build that you know, team. Yep. Do you have any unique rituals that get your creativity going? Hmm. At school, we used to keep a, a little shot glass under our desk. <laughs> <laughs> no, I uh, no. I'm like, no. I, don't know. I mean, I would say once you're working out there, I guess your ritual is technically your brainstorm, you know? It's like you bring in all your weapons and your tools, which is 
your pens and your notebooks, you know? And I think that's technically the ritual. Yeah. Coffee, maybe. Mm -hmm. And that's another place where we disagree. I like my coffee a little sweet with a little creamer. Art likes his coffee just black. So. <laughs> no sugar. That's funny because I would have expected the opposite. So I love that coffee. Nice. Or, you know, a really good coffee with some tequila cream and chocolate bonita. There you go. <laughs> um, how have you had to adjust your business model to accommodate to this quarantine lifestyle? Hmm. A lot more Zoom calls. <laughs> Normally, I, I would like to, you know, sit down with my client, kind of, I feel like a lot of it, you, you, you get to read, you know, the person just sitting there, you know, in front of you. And sometimes that can be a little hard over a phone call or a video call. So I think that's one of the things where we've had to kind of shift is, okay, let's, let's still sit down and talk about the project, but let's do it virtually rather than, you know, at Starbucks or the usual spot. It's definitely changed, but um, the way we were looking at it is, it is a lot of over the computer Zoom calls, but if anything, if you just, you know, keep doing that and, and it's easier for you to show your clients through computers. I mean, at that point, sky's the limit because you can be showing clients your work from another country. You don't have to technically meet up, you know, so you can, it's like a spread your wings kind of thing, you know, like you're already doing it. And the guy is probably like 20 miles away from here. It's the same thing if they were 2000 miles away from here, you know. Yeah, it's, it's weird, but it definitely opens doors. And I mean, you know, we're here today, I think, because of the ability to do that. Uh, none of us are really in the same, you know, we've got people from Orlando, Atlanta, uh, Houston, Detroit, like we've got a mix of people and we were able to do that. We're all zoomed out probably, but you know, we made it work and it, 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 good things come out of everything, right? Um, For sure. You gotta, you gotta make the best of it. Look what came out of my pants. The what? Look what came out of my pants. <laughs> um, some people were saying that you were turning into a Hulk, Eddie. By the way. Yeah, it's because there's no light in here. All right. <laughs> Sorry. The dramatic lighting. Um, and do you feel you naturally take lead on group project? Django. Can you repeat the question? I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Do you feel like you naturally take lead on projects or do you usually step back? Um, for me, it depends. If, if I have a, maybe like a, an idea that comes up when the project, you know, is kicking off, then I would like to maybe, you know, speak out about my idea and see what people think. But if I feel like someone has said something that to me just works, then I kind of let them kind of go with it. And again, just seeing how I can complement that idea or maybe my idea can complement the idea they had and kind of growing it from there. Um, but it, for me, it, it fluctuates. Yeah, personally, I usually, I usually like to take a step back and see kind of like the ideas bubble, you know? Um, actually, Clayton one time described me in a way of never heard before he said um that it looked like i like to lead from the back and um that kind of stuck with me a couple years ago and i kind of focused on it more because i i was trying to see what he meant by that and um i i can see that he was right because i usually like to you know lay back a little bit see the ideas coming and then start giving my opinions and being like you know we should probably do this and then push it like this and then out of there it kind of you know pushing them from the back and it kind of creates either a stronger concept or just a new concept overall. And I think that's a great trait is, you know, good leaders listen. And I think that's, that's, that's kind of what you're doing there as a little, right? It's, you're letting everyone show what their, what their, you know, what their ideas are and, and talk and you listen and then you take on that and like, how can we improve that? Right. It's not just like, well, I say we should do this. Um, so that's awesome. 
Uh, we have uh, seven questions more. I think we can go through these and I, and then we can continue with that. Um, so let's see, at what moment in your career did you realize this is it, I've made it as a professional creative? Mm, ah. I mean, I don't know if I'm there yet. I don't know, you know? I feel like it's still part of the the path. We're, we're still getting there. And that's the thing that we kind of had to teach ourselves. Um, I know we mentioned being comfortable, but there's two types of comfortable. The comfortable of like being comfortable at work so you can get your work done, you know? And the comfortable where we try not to be is um, basically not to be content to where we're at, you know? I mean, there's always something bigger, something better out there. You know, kind of keep striving. Again, never be comfortable. And that's just in a different context because I technically, I mean, I technically still don't feel like I've made it to anywhere I want to be. Um, if my bosses hears that, I'm sorry, but, <laughs> um, and I mean, that's just the, the honesty. Cause I mean, out of school, we thought we were on top of the world and it was, I mean, and it still is very difficult just to even step foot into this creative industry because again, I thought I was going to kill it after school and it really took me a while to finally get a job somewhere and then somebody take a risk on me basically and so far it's paid off so I really appreciate AMG taking a risk on me. So this one actually kind of goes back to what we were talking before. I don't know why I didn't see it. If multiple people are presenting concepts, you like to share those concepts in a line before presenting or do your product approach them individually? Like if we're gonna go present to a client? So, um, and this to me seems more like internal, like within the team. So it says if multiple people present concepts, you like to share those in a line before presenting or do you approach them individually? So like, is it an open, yeah, it's um yeah, it's usually always open. I mean, we kind of have to kind of have to go in there with everything we got and then you put it all out there, you know, you just throw up on your board and then you kind of start taking away stuff. It's kind of like design, you know. You throw up on a artboard and then you start simplifying it until it's where exactly where you think it should be. And if you have six concepts, you know, I think personally that's a lot to present to a client. That's way too many options cuz then you're never going to finish. So if you have six, you know, narrow it down to three. Or maybe if you're very confident in two, just present whatever you feel like it's going to work. Because, I mean, we are the professionals, quote unquote. So we also have to speak up and tell our clients why we believe that they should go with concept A or concept B. Do you prefer working by yourself or on a team? always on a team. I mean, I was a freelancer out of school for a while, but I was still working on teams because I mean, I had to contact the printer. I had to contact whoever was helping me as copy. I had to contact the client. And I mean, technically as a freelancer, it is working by yourself, but I like to look at it still as a team because you're not technically doing everything yourself, even though like in, it seems like you may be, um, but you're really not. Um, talking about freelancing, what is the one mistake you would tell new freelancers to avoid when they are starting out? Have a contract ready. Yes. Write a contract, even if it's a template for your contracts where you're just switching out names and prices, do that. But always have a contract ready because you never know. The client might be super nice the first day when you're pitching out ideas and then Later on, they're going to be like, well, I didn't know about that. You didn't tell me it's not in the contract. And unfortunately, there's not much you can do there. But at least if you have it on paper, it's like, hey, it's right here, man. You, you, you can't say anything about that. And it gives you a little bit more you know, confidence that you'll be able to get paid. Because it is known in our industry that sometimes people forget to pay or don't like paying, you know, so... That way you can remind them, hey, here's your PayPal invoice. You have 30 days. 
<laughs> yeah, for sure. I'm actually going to drop, because I remembered, I'm going to drop a link uh, in the chat here in a little bit about Mike Monteiro's talk about having a contract and, and, and painting and, you know, not as long as, even if you trust people, just, just sign a contract. It's co right. cover yourself, take care of yourself, please. And I know the word contract sounds, I mean, at least for me, it sounded a little way out there, a little scary. I was like, whoa, I'm not that, I'm not there yet. But I mean, it can be super simple, you know? Yeah. As, I mean, again, we are designers, so design it. Don't just, you know, put it on a Word document or anything. But if you have to, that's fine too, as long as you just practice on the skills, because you're only going to get better at that, so. Mm -hmm. It is a skill to write contracts, for sure. Um, so there's a question that's similar, but in addition to contracts, is there anything else that you wish you, that you knew uh, when you first started freelancing? Besides the contracts. Personally, I now looking in the agency world, I wish I knew how to go for clients. I never, I always looked at myself as a freelancer going out of school. So I was like, oh, I, a freelancer by myself, can't go pitch this client because they'll never go for me. But I mean, realistically, clients can go with anywhere they want as long as your idea is the one that works, you know? So don't be scared to like go after any client. What is the best way to expand your network? Any tips on that? Actually, we have a lot of students today, so. We talk about this all the time because um, we feel like we should be better at it. And it's just, I hate to say it, but social media, you know, these days you, just by posting, being consistent, um, if you go visit our page, we do the complete opposite. We never post and we, <laughs> and we never do anything. But we are trying to get better at it. Um, but honestly, in this new digital age, uh, that's the way to go, man. Just social media for some reason. I also think being part of like the community, you know, like being in AIGA, and maybe it's not every every event you go to, but try to just make it out there and just remember faces. You know what I mean? Like, hey, like I saw you last time. How you been? Or just try to create small connections here and there. You don't have to meet everybody. You don't have to be you know, the most talkative person, but just be, you know, get yourself out there. Yeah. yeah for sure. It's, it's, it's a hard thing to do. Um, yeah. You know, just kind of getting yourself out there, especially if you're more of an introvert. But on the plus side, like you said, technology helps. It's a, it's a bit, you know, it, it helps. It's a bit easier to kind of get, whether it's social media, joining communities, you know, different stock channels, AJ, uh, AJ nationally has a, has a lot of uh, chapters that now, thankfully, we have been able to attend our events and that's been great, uh, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I'm always looking for a community, so. And then last question, um, and we can wrap it up. Can you talk through your pitch process? How do you approach a brief to stand out, especially among national or other possibly larger design groups with more resources? What if that's our secret? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't know. It's just the thing is, there's no one pitch that you can do over and over again. Ah. Um, what? Sorry. Um, there's just no pitch that you can like continue doing. Like every client is different, so your pitches are always going to change because it's not, sometimes you can kind of like take stuff out and replace either client name here or something, but every client wants something different. They need their, their expectations are just different overall. So um, that's just a tough question though, but I don't know, Art, if you want to add anything? Yeah. I mean, to me, I think it's um, being confident, you know, in yourself is important. That's the, like the first thing is being confident in yourself and also, when you're getting ready to pitch, think about questions that your client might be asking you. 
you know, try to be ready for anything that might come up. So if it does come up, then you can, you know, you already have the answer for it. So you're just more prepared for, you know, that brief or, you know, that pitch. Yeah, for sure. Sweet. Well, Arturo, Eduardo, <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being, you know, joining us. It was great, great having y'all. Uh, and I look forward to see what y'all do next.